muted, it would be helpful. Um, green cushion that used to be in the yurt, you know, that used to sit on. Uh, I think there's somebody who is not muted. Let's see. Yeah. Welcome, everyone. I know you all have been waiting for this for a long, long time. It got postponed two times because of COVID. So thank you so much for your patience. And it would be lovely perhaps to get a sense of which part of the world you're in. So if you're comfortable changing your name to also add your country, just feel free to rename yourself. And if you can't, it's okay, not a big deal. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 Just take Hello. A... How are you? Hello. You're uh, from New Zealand. Cara right. from the United States. Sandra and Elaine. Canada. Welcome. Bonnie, Winnipeg, Canada. Mm, Mary welcome. Brown, Bainbridge Island, Washington. Ah, Valerie, Wales. Lumsden Beach, Saskatchewan, Canada. Saki, Saki from Bangladesh. Valerie Wildsman from the City of Angels. You're not in Scotland. No. Washington. <laughs> Alexandra, Alexandra Marcola, Oregon. London. London. Good in Seattle. Australia. Australia. Wow. Okay. Perhaps okay. Douglas in Ireland. Ireland. Ottawa, Ontario. That's a lot of Turtle Island. <laughs> Lexington, Han, Abenaki Territory, unceded in Vermont. Ottawa, Canada. We have Spain. 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 Seattle, Washington. Cape <laughs> Cod. in Ireland. Ottawa, Washington, Washington, USA. Good Miwok. Post Miwok Territory, Point Reyes. Alexandra, 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 Alexandra. Alexandra. Okay, welcome everybody. Sheila, I think it's it's big. <laughs> Connie from Victoria, BC. Welcome everyone. Naharika, you're going to need to unmute yourself. And everyone else, please keep yourself muted. Thank you so much for these warm introductions from all over the world. <laughs> welcome to our our opportunity to gather together for this common Hello. Yeah, heartfelt moment. Thank you for those introductions. Yeah. We're about to move over into the beginning of our meetings. Naharika, go ahead. Thank you all for being here. Such a wonderful flavor to get all of your voices from all over the world. Um, I will just check if Jonathan is here now. Jonathan, if you're here, just unmute. Okay, he may take a little bit more. So the request is as far as possible, just keep yourself muted unless there's a specific time in the call when we're asking you to share a question. So just make sure you are muted at all times. Uh, Gail, do you have a question? Can't hear you, Gail. Uh, yeah, you have to. Okay, what is the passcode? I'm trying to use another device, but the I link think... tell the passcode. Ah, uh, yes, the passcode is. I will tell you in a moment. You can see it if you click on the little shield in the top left. It is nine four three one one zero. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Naharika. I have a friend trying to get on, but it says um, 
the meetings at capacity and she registered. Huh. Yes, so the Zoom room can only handle 1,000 people. So the okay, other people will have to. 100 people. 1,000 people is the maximum capacity. So the other people can join us in the YouTube live. So thank you to all of you who are also joining us from YouTube Live. We hope you can also share in the meaningful experience and feel the energy um, on the YouTube Live as well. We're sorry we can't accommodate more than a thousand people. Zoom can't handle that. Um, all right, so let's transition. I will introduce Jonathan um, and then Jonathan will introduce the wonderful Joanna who is here with us. So Jonathan Gustin is the founder and lead teacher of Purpose Guides Institute. He has, thank you, Catherine. He has been a psychotherapist, meditation teacher, and a purpose guide for over 25 years. He's also the founder of Green Sangha, a spiritually based environmentalist, environmental activist organization. And Jonathan guides people to find the place where their deepest gladness and the world's deep hunger meet in the words of Frederick Beekner, And he does this by offering the flagship Purpose Discovery Program, which has been going on for the last 20 years. And he also trains purpose guides to guide others to connect with their soul level purpose. So if you are somebody who's also seeking to connect with your soul level purpose to, to explore how am I called to serve in the world in this time of change, then just keep an eye out on our follow-up emails. We'll be sending a little bit more about the Purpose Discovery Program after this event. Um, so that's Jonathan who is here and he will introduce the wonderful Joanna Macy. And if you have any questions at any point during the program, just send me a direct message. So just, you'll see my name on the top of the participants list as the co-host, Niharika is my name. So just send me a direct message if there's any technical issues you're facing, if there's a burning question or uh, some comment that you'd like to share, just direct message me. Um, all right, Jonathan, I'd like to pass that on to you. Niharka, chat is disabled. We can't direct message you. Oh, yes, I will edit that right now. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Thank you, Niharka, for that wonderful um, introduction. Um, first of all, welcome, 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 everybody. Um, here live on the call, or if you are uh, watching on YouTube, or if you're watching the recording, I just want to say we are a community somehow across time and across space um, to gather for this specific topic, climate change as spiritual practice. So it is my uh, honor and privilege to introduce uh, Joanna Macy. I'm just going to read two sentences and then say something um, personal. So as you probably already know, uh, eco-philosopher Joanna Macy is a scholar of Buddhism, general systems theory, and deep ecology. She's a respected voice in the movements for peace, justice, and the environment. She interweaves her scholarship with six decades of activism, uh, has written over 13 books, and has been a uh, dear friend of mine for almost 30 years. And um, what I want to share is that, um, I believe it was Saturday, I went over to her house, we live just maybe 40 minutes apart from one another. And um, the amount of energy, enthusiasm, and love of work, now what, what's normally called work on a Saturday is having a meeting and going through all this stuff. And what I realized is, um, that what you probably already know, John is a very rare person. And it's something that maybe when I grow up, I might become, which is that the work, the effort of being an activist, of loving life, of letting your heart be broken open again and again, gives her energy. Most 93-year-olds, I imagine, um, I've, I've cut back and, and, and cut, cutting back is perfectly fine. Um, and maybe, maybe Joanna should take some more rest sometimes. But what happens with her is that it, there's a rejuvenating and energizing effect. So I just wanted to say, sitting there for, for three hours, I kept it to myself, but in my mind, I'm going, we're talking about climate change and partial extinction, and your, your heart is opening and getting more energized. So I just wanted to give you that little vignette um, about my personal experience of her just the other day. 
So Joanna, warm, warm welcome, and thank you for being with us today. And we're going to have a little science talk. I'm going to give one in 12 minutes, but Joanna is going to say a few words to warm up the circle so that we can, you know, really allow ourselves to listen to the climate uh, science. But before we do that, um, the mic is all Joanna's to, to warm oh, up I, the circle. Am I on? Yep, you're on. Oh, yeah. Well, hello, everybody. I'm here with you. We all, some over, have we heard how many we are this morning? We are at least, a th well, we're a thousand people on Zoom and um, Catherine or Naharka will have to let me know in the chat how many we are on YouTube. Oh, okay. I'm surrounded then, I'm in touch then uh, with you, Earth, planet people like me brought into life by great good fortune uh, at a time that we can be uh, useful. If you wanted a uh, spell on earth, uh, you could, there are all kinds of beautiful beings that you could have chosen to be. We kind of practice that in the council of all beings when we let another life form speak through us. But now we are here uh, consciously as humans. That means that uh, we have been uh, given um, fully subject to uh, pain, suffering, joy, glee, uh, falling in love, falling out of love. Uh, and we have a uh, skin that can uh, sense the temperature. They can be easily cut open. We have hearts that beat. We have tears that can flow. We have temptations to divert ourselves and temptations to uh, go to sleep. And we're at this uh, incredible moment, just this, this moment. Uh, not only when there is a uh, climate catastrophe unfolding that scientists are grappling with, and many of us are trying to understand it, but it is complex and so uh, engulfing that it's very hard to uh, really get it. But we're doing our best particularly uh, this moment at the midday of the 14th day of June uh, from the west coast of North America and you from so many different parts, choosing to be here, choosing to face the music together, to understand as very best we can uh, in spite of our instinctive senses of uh, hear no evil, sleep no evil, no, I don't want to know, I'm just let me go to sleep, let me go to sleep. And we are making the effort uh, and to be do that together, we don't know how uh, powerful that that can be. But we are wholehearted in the attempt. That means we really want to get the music. I just want to say that for me, I've been in love with life on earth for so, certainly uh, as a child on my grandfather's farm, as a, a growing up, falling in love, marrying, bearing three beautiful children. But at this point, to be able to uh, have my heart uh, break open on the scale that this seems to involve <clears throat> and to do it in the company of Jonathan Gustin, who is a brave man. 
And to do it in the company of some men you'll meet and have a chance to meet who've written the ethical maxims for an endangered planet, uh, <clears throat> David Schenk and uh, Larry Churchill. Uh, oh, we mean it. We, we mean it this time. And, uh, and we have uh, so much to go on. We have the great traditions. We have uh, purpose, uh, an appetite for purpose. Uh, we have this book that just got published today, uh, which is uh, my last book, my recent book, and co-written with Chris Johnstone. Hi, Chris. I know you're up there and watching this from Northern Scotland. It is beautiful. And it represents about 100 hours on Zoom over the last couple of years. <laughs> so uh, I think now that we are about to go into the science. And can you flash me the time? Somebody, uh, maybe, yeah. Okay. Well, I have a watch. Okay, there we go. So, oh, good. I We are about... This is how we're going to begin. So we're not just going to uh, take a winding road. It's going to be thunderclap. It's going to be right away water in your face because we have uh, we don't have a lot of time, and we want to know right from the beginning, as best we can, from what the scientists say, what we are facing and likely to how it's building and what we're likely to go through. Who else but us? And we're going to pay attention to our feelings as earthlings when we hear Jonathan and see his slides. We're going to feel our hearts and the twisting of our guts or whatever. Just And I just can only say, keep breathing. Keep breathing and know in some way that the uh, confusion, the fear, the rage, or any, any f feelings that come up are important for you to know because they're not going to be just your feelings. And that we're going to help each other when we want to give up or when we want to go crazy or when we want to take out the pressure on us by shooting people. So this is thank you, Jonathan, for uh, wanting not my waste any time. But we're ready for you. We're here. We're people of planet Earth. We want to know. We don't have any other planet we're in. We want to know. We all want to know. Thanks. Thank you. Joanna generously shared with me a, uh, a paper, which we'll talk about later, six maxims. And the first maxim, David and Larry, we're going to bring them back in two weeks with Joanna and I. But I just want to read this maxim to you. It says, work hard to grasp the immensity of the change. I'll just say it again, and then I'll go right into the climate science. Work hard to grasp the immensity of the change. Work hard's an interesting one. It's also working less to keep it out, which I guess is implied, right? Allow yourself to be moved, to feel your feelings. And I apologize ahead of time. This 12 minute presentation is, you know, what the scientists are telling us. So here we go. Do you want to come around and look at it from here? <laughs> We're over, uh, wow, 1,600 people now. Climate change as spiritual practice transforming anxiety into empowerment. So what is this global warming? 
The physicist Wallace Brooker popularized the term global warming with his 1975 article, Climatic Change, Are We on the Brink of a Pronounced Global Warming? That was 1975. The answer is obviously yes. In 2002, American political consultant Franz Luntz advised the Bush administration to adopt the phrase climate change in place of global warming or global heating. The strategy, avoid frightening language, and question the certainty of the growing scientific consensus. This slowed us down. Understanding and acknowledging warming is our basic ethical responsibility as stewards of our life support systems and as caring, discerning members of the human family. Thank you for writing that, Susan Haig. I love that line. Our basic ethical responsibility is what? In the next 10 minutes, to listen to what the climate scientists have been trying to tell us since at least 1975. And one of the first things they tell us is that you can't look at one thing in isolation. This presentation will concentrate on climate change, but it is part of an inner series of connected processes, earth processes, including biochemical flows, land system change, ocean acidification, and so forth. The bottom line, this slide from the World Meteorological Organization, the past seven years that you've lived through have been the seven warmest on record. Earth temperature is increasing. It's now over one degree Celsius than it was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Since the 80s, each decade has been warmer than the previous one. We know that the more carbon dioxide there is in the atmosphere, the more the climate, the more the temperature increases. We had it pretty steady there for 400,000 years between 175 and 300 parts per million of carbon dioxide without human interference. This has been the norm for almost half a million years until recently. And you see that hockey stick graph just shoot up perfectly straight. I think we're at 419 parts per million now. So I'm going to present this crisis in sort of three baskets. There's the raw data that climate scientists look at, and then there's a variety, a spectrum of the way the climate scientists receive that data. The first I'm just calling climate change calamity. This is the intergovernmental panel on climate change's message. The next level up or down, as the case may be, I'm calling partial extinction, which includes tipping points and feedback loops even more than sometimes the IPIC uh, message does. And then total extinction or near total extinction is the third piece. So this level one crisis, I'm calling it climate change calamity. The calamity scenario is actually the conservative scenario put out by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which says we can no longer prevent many of the worst consequences of global warming. In a minute, I'm going to play a, a clip, just one minute and 13 seconds of Antonio Guterres, who is our current UN General Secretary. He is uh, the former two-time um, Prime Minister of Portugal. And as you know, career diplomats tend not to be shrill or blunt. So take that into consideration when you listen to what he has to say. Just one minute and 13 seconds. The jury has reached a verdict, and it is damning. This report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is a litany of broken climate promises. It is a file of shame cataloging the empty pledges that put us firmly on track towards an unlivable world. We are on a fast track to climate disaster. This is a climate emergency. Climate scientists warn that we are already perilously close to tipping points that could lead to cascading and irreversible climate impacts. But high-emitting governments and corporations are not just turning a blind eye. 
they are adding fuel to the flames. They are choking our planet based on their vested interests and historic investments in fossil fuels when cheaper, renewable solutions provide green jobs, energy security, and greater price stability. Climate activists are sometimes depicted as dangerous radicals. But the truly dangerous radicals are the countries that are increasing the production of fossil fuels. Investing in new fossil fuel infrastructure is moral and economic madness. Moral and economic madness. That's the conservative view on climate change. How did we get there? I'm going to spend no time at all. I think this picture will uh, give you a pretty good indication. How did we get so much carbon? And it's not all just about carbon, of course, but we're concentrating on that at this moment. How did we get so far down the carbon you know, sinkhole? Well, this is a 50 lane traffic jam on a highway in China. Just let that in. Uh, this is a flood, I believe, from Singapore. Um, this is a picture uh, from one of the hurricanes that hit um, Louisiana. It's important to keep in mind that it is the poor who are the first to suffer, well, basically in everything, but in climate change. But as climate change gets worse and worse, nobody is left out of this. So a group of scientists, um, I'm putting them in arbitrarily, I'm calling it level two, partial extinction, say that the IPIC report doesn't include all the tipping points and feedback loops, at least not enough, that can cause cascading and runaway warming. For example, methane is a greenhouse gas that is 86 times more powerful than CO2. For some reason, my slides aren't moving. Ah, now they are, good. So methane, the blanket of carbon in the atmosphere has already triggered runaway warming from the release of methane gases that have been trapped for eons under Arctic ice and permafrost, whereas the full effect of heat from a carbon molecule takes 10 years peak warming from a methane molecule occurs in a matter of months. Sometimes, some scientists fear a methane burp of billions of tons when a full melt of the summer Arctic ice occurs. A full melt has not happened for the past 4 million years, and this could happen within a handful of years. Should such a sudden large release of methane occur, the Earth's warming would rapidly accelerate within months. This alone could be an extinction level event. This is a picture of the Canadian permafrost. The word permafrost means permanent frost. So much of Canada is permanently frozen, or it was. It's beginning to melt and you can see a methane sinkhole here. And you just heard how it's 86 times more powerful than CO2. There are other effects that we need to take into consideration. Uh, feedback loops. So as you know, the earth is reflective. It's called the albedo or re reflectivity of planet earth. Thank goodness. Otherwise we would absorb all the light, heat, and radiation of the sun. Well, what's happening now is that just with one degree Celsius of temperature change, the snow, ice fields, and Arctic ice are melting, revealing underneath the earth and the ocean, which are darker and absorb more heat, light, and radiation, causing things to warm up, and then more ice to melt. It's a vicious feedback loop, and we are right smack dab in the middle of it. This comes from the website Job One for Humanity, a few really important points to highlight. From 2025 to 2031, the severity frequency and scale of climate disasters will increase exponentially due to the momentum within the climate system. This word momentum is really important. If all nearly 8 billion of us stop driving cars, stop heating our uh, furnaces with, you know, um, 
natural gas and so forth, the temperature of the earth would continue to increase. There's a certain amount of momentum in the system. That doesn't mean we shouldn't stop driving our cars, but just want to point out. Um, two, warming driven effects will take out half of humanity by 2050. If we take radical positive action within the next three to nine years, and if we have not crossed too many tipping points and feedback loops already, we may be able to save a portion of humanity. Otherwise, climate change will begin to remove the rest of humanity by 2070. The effects could take at least three decades to kill half of humanity and another two to four decades to kill most of the rest of humanity. Coming back to that maxim, working hard to grasp the immensity of the situation. Again, the slide won't go forward. Oh, okay. Um, all right, could things be even worse? Um, possibly. Um, so uh, there are a small group of scientists, it's not the majority, um, who read the data uh, in such a way that they see that we are actually faced for total facing total extinction. Uh, Jem Bendel is a climate scientist. Uh, he wrote, or as a scientist, he wrote uh, the well-known paper, Deep Adaptation. Catherine Ingram reported um, on this situation in her essay, Facing Extinction. Michael Dowd has an excellent website and um, um, YouTube channel called um, Post Doom. So this is a, a short excerpt from Facing Extinction from Catherine as your awareness metabolizes the deadly threats ahead and the unlikeliness of solutions that will change the course, you might find a strange reordering of your thoughts and motivations. For one thing, you will no longer need to consider what you might leave behind, as there will not likely be anyone there to see or experience it, at least not for long. So this is the, the last slide in, um, in this presentation. And you might be left with the question, well, wait, which level of the climate crisis are we facing? And again, my job is to simply report what some of the sort of, I would call different baskets of climate um, scientists are saying. At the, at the least, things are calamitously bad. Um, the Intergovernal, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is really clear about that now. If you include more tipping points and feedback loops in ways that maybe uh, IPIC's message doesn't, we are facing partial extinction and a, a, a very small amount of um, climate scientists are predicting total extinction. Um, I don't, I'm not going to take an opinion on this. I'm not a climate scientist. I'll say this, there seems to be good news and bad news. The bad news is pretty off, obvious, um, uh, a die off of our species and the myriad other species that we're taking down with us already and in the future um, is horrifying. On the other hand, I'm living in a time where I can attempt to do something. We are living at a time where we can attempt to do something to save life. Uh, Michael Dowd's wife, Connie Barlow, is, is involved in assisted migration, taking trees that are uh, here sort of in the, you know, closer to the equator and bringing them closer to the Arctic. There's so much that can be saved, so much love of life that can be moved forward. So that's how I see this situation, the bad news and then the good news. So I'm going to hand it over to um, Joanna. Um, pretty soon, we're going to do uh, a council. Um, maybe you could call it a grief council, but we'll, we'll see what we'll call it. It's really our embodied response. How are we, a, are we able to grasp the immensity of the change? Um, and so... Um, I'll give a few pointers about that in a moment, but I want to hand it over to Joanna 
to uh, warm up um, the space, a kind of bridge, you know, can we let this in? So Joanna, whenever you're ready, you can uh, unmute and uh, sort of introduce our, our circle, our, our council. Yes. Well, thank you uh, for uh, giving us the framework of uh, what's expected and of how likely it is and what is the ratio of probability. Um, I think that if, if you all are like me in my life, uh, you don't, I must get this blank out. Excuse me. Uh, maybe you, uh, my, I can't, you can help move that over. Uh, I can't get rid of your video Lose. Uh, later. There. Once, yeah, okay. We have each other and we have our uh, bodies and we have the timing of our appearance here. It is so easy. Let's just recognize this right away. It is so easy to have people rattling away, giving these bad news with the reports, even the IPCC report, which is considered uh, the mildest uh, organization, the one that takes the most modest view of the changes in store. Uh, but even that, uh, that, that we would uh, be uh, talking into the wind if we were to say anything. Can people hear it? Can we hear it? Can we allow ourselves to feel it? Are we silenced by the situation that we're in? That is, uh, we have families to raise or we have classes to teach, we have job to do, we have a neighborhood to live in, we have a social situation. We are needing to do what's possible to get through a pandemic to save ourselves from uh, illness. Uh, from and danger, can we afford to let this in? And can we would be? So as I look at myself, I see that I have been doing uh, help helping people to break through the the silence for the last forty two years. I've written books about it, and. Uh, formed activities and silence and councils and uh, rituals, grief rituals, grief is a breaking the silence where we can experience actually expressing what it feels like, what it even looks like, what it is like to live with uh, this situation that we're in. I myself find it very hard, even though I've written books about it. Uh, if I start to talk about their family members that tease me as if I don't know the difference between uh, being on stage and running a ceremony and, be, and just relaxing at home or just being in my normal life. What? Are you treating us like a workshop? You know, <laughs> what? How do you break the silence? And I find that uh, I, with all my confidence and um, experience, uh, find it hard. Uh, I, I, then I think of my young friend, Mikhail, who just ran for office. He totally he ran for office for a high office uh, for Congress, the equivalent in Switzerland, and he uh, walked carrying the IPC report, speaking of it, at his uh, events outdoors and holding a balloon of the earth. And he said, in the, uh, we are, our earth is burning, the earth is on fire. Agissons-nous pour la terre, he was in French speaking and people would just walk by 
and we talked about what that meant for him. And I'll mention him again because, uh, of course, he did get elected, but he emerged a different person with so many more ideas because he had spoken for the earth. It changed him. So uh, to have the chance now to express, here's a moment where we don't have to uh, play uh, uh, the, a normal, uh, polite citizen. Actually, if we were to allow ourselves to believe what the scientists are saying, what's more and more actually in the newspapers, if we were to allow it in, what are the feelings that arise in us when we, in that moment, we allow ourselves to take it seriously? What it would do for us, what kind of uh, freedom, what kind of wild freedom might, might that unleash in us? Well, we have given ourselves the plan for a chance for that right now. We're going to go into a grief council, all thousands, some of us, <laughs> to will have a chance to speak. We will have um, yeah, we're going to have 35 minutes for that. And so uh, this is a situation that to do this uh, openly will have a, can release something for us, something for us because we are each planet people. We are here and we've been allowed, endowed with ears that can hear and eyes that can see and read and get the reports, skin that can feel it. And we're made of water so much, it's, uh, what the, the high percentage, 70 or something, of a drying up planet. Can we allow ourselves to speak as planet animals that we are? To speak as beings of earth, made of earth, ephemeral, to get born and die? with every cell of our bodies made of earth. La Madre Tierra, Mother Earth is giving to all our ancestors back through centuries, back through the millennia, back through all the songs, all the stories, all the poems, of our belonging, and we're facing having it die on us. The water burning out. The fellow, our fellow animals disappearing on us. They already are, of course, you know the spasms of extinction. What's it like? to know that the stuffed animals that we had as kids or give to our kids today are disappearing. Are we living in such a fake fabricated world that we don't know the dying? Dare we to know it? Honey dears, we have to know it if we're going to do anything to help people. We have to pull away our safety, uh, the screens, all that we've done to normalize, normalize our life so that we can actually be this. And I don't think we can do it by ourselves. Thank God, because we, we need each other. We need each other at every step of the way. 
And right now, we need each other to hear us be open-hearted with whatever we feel. But we can speak it, even if we speak our frustration that we can't feel or dare to start speaking the grief and see what it has to say. We don't know, but we can try. So would you get me the bell from, uh, well, let me, I'm gonna, okay, there's a gong right by, yep, the, I know where you're and we're going to, I'm gonna ring a gong. I think I'm going to ask for a presiding spirit I'm going to ask for maybe we can, each of us, think of uh, who is going to be there uh, to join us and to bless our tears and our rage. It could be Tara. It could be the thousand hands of Avalokiteshvara with a tear on each hand. It could be the Sisters of Mercy. It could be the Mother of God. It could be the Bodhisattvas bathed in fire of grief. All right, so we're going to start and I, this is your permission and your occasion, my friends. My friends, I can't even see you. What am I asking? I'm asking you and you can't see, well, yes, you can see me, you can't see each other. Can you trust that they're there? Can you trust how many are we? Well, I know we're over a thousand. I know we're from many places, but we're from the same earth. We're from the same overheating, desperate earth where many of her children are already going extinct. All right. I'm going to shut up and let you speak. Are you feeling grief? Are you feeling outrage? Are you feeling lost? What is it? What is it? It's not yours. It's the earth. You can let the earth speak. You can let this earth cry out. So there's 1,700 of us. If you'd like to speak, you can raise your digital hand by going to participants and you'll see a little hand icon and you can raise it. Joanna, do you still think we should show the slide about the grief council so people know it's up to you? Um, I, I don't know what, what you're speaking. Okay, I will just show it. Um, so uh, let me just share it. Um, so because the group is uh, so large, just okay. a few um, guidelines. Um, please um, keep your sharing short. Just get right to the point at the, in the center of your heart. Please share feelings, not facts. I know there must be some climate scientists here who have a lot to teach me and everybody else, but that's not a grief circle. The question is, what is in your heart regarding the ecological crisis? And we just listen with our hearts and compassion. We don't unmute and try to console each other. Um, um, as the council guardian, if someone kind of goes on and on, I'll interrupt. Um, please, we, no lectures on the science, as I said, or politics or going off topic. And when you finish, um, Joanna may or may not, you know, offer a bow or a gesture, or she may mirror what you said. It's totally up to her. Um, Naharika will be the person um, oop, 
Naharaka will be the person to uh, introduce people. You can put your face on here, Naharaka, if you want. And if at all possible, um, let's choose some people from outside the United States. You can actually change your name. So it can be like Barbara from Senegal or whatever. So that, that might facilitate things. Okay, I've said enough. The council is open. Nancy. I feel horror. I feel pain. I feel this terrible grief beyond what I was already feeling. I, 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 I feel overwhelmed. That's what totally mind-bogglingly, fearfully overwhelmed and don't and feel that, that overwhelm makes me feel like I can't move and I don't want to be stopped in my tracks. I want to move, I want to do what I can do. I, and feeling overwhelmed makes it very difficult for me. So I want that gone. I hear you. Please, please, can we make a goal in life uh, the well being of the planet? At the moment, our goal, our goal is money. Let it, the well being in life must be the planet and caring for all of life. Uh, that is the, the goal we should be striving for. Uh, at the moment, we, we worship mammon and not God. Thank you. Um, moving forward, please wait until your image appears on the screen and I call on you. That way we don't have people overlapping and we don't cut off Joanna in case you wanted to say something more to Nancy. Go ahead. We hear you. Who just spoke? Yes, thank you. Are you on the screen? Yeah. Our belonging is both our pain and our love. That is our true nature. And of course we hurt, but that hurt helps us rediscover our deep belonging. And the nature of that discovery is compassion. Thank you, Nancy. Sylvia. Thank you on my knees in grief and love that goes beyond death. The only place I can rest is if I strive and devote myself to making my life a living prayer of listening, of, of returning to right now right now, knowing our supreme interconnectedness and interdependence and sacredness, and listen and look and let Mother Earth show me what my next best greatest service can be, and let the inspiration come into me and follow it and sit with my questions and let them teach me from the roots of the earth to the infinite sacred oneness that we actually are. And so my path is to become an agent of this living prayer as much as I can now and now and now. And Thank now. you, community. Thank you. Thank you for putting to words the beauty of the openness that we are moving into for ourselves, our earth, and others, all others. Thank you, Sylvia. Valerie from France. You're muted. 
sorry. Um, why I feel, um, I feel so much shame, <laughs> really so much shame, so much shame. I would say right now, don't give a fuck for humans, but so in desperation for all the others, you know, like, and when I see that it's all about us, even in the transition, like, so I feel a, like a mix of despair and, and angriness. And the good news that I see is like, if we disappear, we will stop killing masses and masses and masses of animals. And that would be the good news, I guess. But I feel um, so sorry for all the ones that we're taking with us. This is so unfair. And all the children. And, uh, and I know it will um, free us. So what? <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm more full than that in the invisible mechanism or all, all this liberation. But uh, yeah, anyway, thank you for listening to me. I hear you. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, Rafaela in Bristol, UK. If I mispronounce anyone's name, you can let me know. I'm feeling a mixture of gratitude and shame. And just like utter disbelief. Like, I feel like this is a crazy dream and I have children Uh, yeah, that remind me of my, the, the feeling of loss, just such a deep loss that feels so big, it feels like madness. Thank you, speak for me as well. Next. Thank you, Rafaela. Jen and Paul from England. Mm. I feel... Um... I feel a real knot of anger deep down in my belly, a growl that wants to come out and gets uh, like suppressed, gets pushed back down again. And I feel a knot of tension right here, uh, my solar plexus. Uh, that's, you know, it's a fear for me, a fear for myself and, and anger for all, the, all that we've lost and all that we're losing. Uh, and together that like is I feel it rising in me in my chest like a like a boulder that this body can't contain and then all these mm, just mechanisms inside of me pushing that down again and then like I'm shutting down and I get sleepy and and in the face of that when I want to shut down that's how I'm feeling right now Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Sam from the UK. Mm, thank you for this. Um, I'm feeling a sadness and a grief for the connection between myself and others, particularly. Um, those that are sleeping and the version of myself that sleeps um, and my past self <laughs> who slept for so long um, and I feel uh, lost but galvanized to find the words and the way to reach the dreams of the people that are sleeping. 
I hear you. Thank you, Sam. Susan Hake. Thank you for this. And I feel um, deep gratitude to you both to the way you framed this conversation and humility because of being part of something so large um, in the world. I feel um, awed by possibilities as well. And it's because I live in a state, New Jersey, that is a tapestry of small communities. We don't have large mega cities. We don't have 50 lane, maybe six lane. And I'm aware of restorative work being done by so many people individually that I want to thank and value that and hope that there's a way that we can all become aware of these efforts all around the globe, restoration, regeneration, humble efforts that's impossible for us all to know about. So I think my heart is um, hopeful that we can find ways to make that clear how many restorers um, that there are and how much potential for healing there is. Thank you. I hear you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Lance from uh, South Africa. The, probably the, the most painful picture I've ever seen was of a mother orangutan. I think it was in Borneo, clinging to a burnt out tree when her forest had been burnt down. And shoot, I, th I think the only thing that kept me going through lockdown as well as mostly on my own was my connection with these Inyala buck or deer you know, that I used to feed by hand that used to come and visit me every day, my geese and, and ducks and iguanas and birds. And you know, so it was, it was mother nature that actually kept me sane during lockdown. So I feel the grief of, of what's departing and you know, what keeps me alive. I hear you. We hear you. Thank you, Lance. Sarah and your little one. Hi. I turn it on. Yeah, I can see she's trying. Take another moment, it's okay. Okay. Let's, um, if we could go to the next person and then we'll come back to Sarah. Susan from Pennsylvania. I feel a whole handful, two handfuls of feelings. The first one is shame. I'm ashamed to be part of a group of species that has lived so casually. And I feel shame that I have failed in my lifetime to stop what's happening. And in that I feel guilty, which is almost worthless, that I've been so taking a back seat to the horror, to the loss of kin with, the, with all the other insects, animals, bacteria, plants, ocean, life, the loss of beauty. I came to this planet wanting to protect the beauty that was here and the diversity that was here and I failed. And so there's also confusion about what's, what's What's the purpose now when I've already failed? And I've been living in, there'll be time, I can do it later, I'm not ready. So I, I feel guilty, I feel ashamed, I feel hopeless, I feel confused. 
I'm, I'm disbelieving that it's already gone this far. There's nothing, nowhere to go. Thank you for that. We hear you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, Beatrice from Pedrosa. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not from, anyway. No, I'm from Brazil. Okay. Thank you. Um, I feel now really desperate and afraid. Uh, we have recently a lot of bad news coming from the Amazon forest. I'm here in a city that over a hundred people have died from a flood. And I just feel like everything around me is going to disappear very soon. And this is so, it's really, uh, it, made, it makes me really afraid and also a little bit paralyzed. But I, I want to find hope to, to move on. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you, Beatrice. Um, just a note, we'll have maybe a handful more of people whenever Joanna says we're done. But at the end, um, you're going to be invited to, we're going to open the chat it may be really fruitful for you to speak into the circle via chat, um, to write a sentence or two. So just to, just to prepare yourself so that your voice is taken in. Um, Alex from Romania. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I feel sick to my stomach. This is the feeling. Literally sick to my stomach and and I feel the emotional numbness that usually kicks in after connecting with uh, this kind of this reality. And uh, right here on the window that I have to my left I was looking for tonight to see the rising full moon and it's complete darkness. The, the moon is not rising. And, and um, I, I have a daughter and I'm thinking that she was born into this world just so she has the opportunity to, to witness and to live through this, through dying off of everything and i was actually considering these days to change my mind and have another child and now i'm thinking why would i you know like what's even the what, where why <laughs> why would i do this and and this fact that i'm reconsidering it even this is heartbreaking for me and i think if if this is a choice that I will make in the near future to reconsider not having uh, another child and to reconsider not bringing another child into this world oh my god <laughs> and I'm wondering okay what is mine to do and how can I what can I do and how can I contribute and how small I am in comparison to this whole uh, disaster that I've been contributing to so actively and yeah, and I don't, I'm, just, I'm lost. And this is not even news to me, yeah. Thank you for this. You voiced what so many want to say. You found words for what so many feel. I hear you, many now do hear you. Thank you, Alex.
Jenny from Vancouver Island. Mm. Wow, thank you. Um, I, I feel the same way. I um, am at the age where I'm, I finally met someone that I want to have children with. And that kind of biological t- clock is ticking in this really intense way. And I, and I just feel so much love available to me to be able to go on that journey and at the same time have always had this deep fear that I wouldn't be strong enough to, to hold the responsibility of raising children. Um, and yet at the same time feel this, like these like warrior spirit babies desperately wanting to be born um, at this time. And it, and it feels like such an honor to be able to feel that and terrifying like truly deeply terrifying of what that what that will ask of me um and whether or not i have the strength um to hold that responsibility and um yeah and to know that i'm not alone in that fear but knowing that like to give up on life would surely mean you know, investing in the worst case scenario. I hear you. Your words of such honesty and courage. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Joanna, um, before we continue, I realize we have your... um, Shambhala prophecy, which is so transmissive coming up, and then the your purpose discovery meditation and a second council. So I'm wondering, should we take maybe two more people, then open it up for the chat sharing, and then move into the next part of our council? I think we're ministering to each other here. And I would like to uh, more voices to be heard and shorten my time. How, 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 how many more voices, just so I can be of support? Well, see, I never got the timing written down. <laughs> Should we say five more minutes? All right. Okay. At least. Yeah. Um, Paul from uh, Reading, UK. And Hebden Bridge, Yorkshire. Um, deep, 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 deep disappointment with the species. I started doing this work. I heard and followed as best I could a calling when I was seven years old and I saw a photograph of planet Earth. The first, I like to think of it as, and it is, the first photograph in the history of the universe, planet Earth. And I was also already active in a junior WWF in the extinction, working for the extinction of species, against the extinction of species. And the question that came to me was, where do I fit in? And after, I'm now, I'm now only 61. And after years of working in conservation and academia, research, psychotherapy, spirituality. My overwhelming feeling at the moment and has been for a while, deep disappointment. Helen, this is Helen. Disappointment. Thank you. And we met in Reading. Few years ago, it was a wonderful event. Thank you. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you too. Sadness, sadness, grief, loss. 
Very. None disappoint. Warmly received, Paul. Uh, Laura from Israel Galilee. Um, my heart is beating really fast because I suddenly understood now why I chose in this life to come as a mammal, where mammals understand connection and and family. And I understand that I came as a human because I could voice and, and connect and, and speak. But, but after 65 years in this world where I've been living and experiencing and practicing and connecting, I still don't know how, how to shout it out in a way that people will hear, how to, how to, how to help people see, how to help myself see and fully feel and change. It feels like a loss, even though I won't give up. What is your name? Laura. 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 Aura, aura. Yeah. Oh, you speak for everyone. It's like our whole confused, beautiful, heartbreaking species. Uh, those words could come from any one of us. How beautiful we're learning. to be there for each other. Thank you, Aura. Judith. Mm -hmm. Joanna. Hello, Joanna. We started years ago with our fear for nuclear war. Yes. And we've been on and on and on and, uh, and my sadness, yes, hello, my sadness and my anger that I thought things would get better, you know, and I'm, okay, I'm 78 and I can't believe that things are, you know, the, what's happening with the environment and the, the gun killings and the, and the racism and the, uh, the poverty and, and, and all the wildlife and the land going i just i hate it and i just i'm so sad and the only thing that keeps me holding on is is yes connection i mean in this time with you and that you go on and i can still see you you can see me after all these years starting in delaware so many years ago delaware do you remember and but the connection and and love and you're still doing it. And as somebody just reminded me, if everybody just does something, something, and my something is love, this is what I have to give. And thank you. And my love to you, my love to everyone here today on this Zoom, my love to everyone and everything all around. I'm just thankful for all of us. And thank you for giving me this time. All around. Thank you, oh, Judith. Oh, one more thing. I have to leave early for a medical appointment. I'm so sorry, but I'll catch the rest of it on a recording. So I'm so glad to have been here now. Thank you. Good luck with the medical appointment. Joanna, I'm wondering after uh, Noni from Melbourne, if we might want to... Um, bring it to the, if we're going to do the, you're going to do the Shambhala prophecy and the, what do I do next meditation? Uh, so Noni. Um, it's for the little ones that is getting me at the moment. My, um, 
my granddaughter's pregnant and how can I be happy? Uh, how can I share her joy without this horror and terror lurking behind it of what the, what's coming for them all? Uh, and then the little creatures and, yeah, that's all. It's just thank you for this. Thank you. Is it Roni or Noni? It's Noni. Noni. Monique. Okay. You know, it's so small that I can't see. Thank you, Monique. Thank you, Noni. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Oh, well, I say what I'm about to say. There was a young woman with a baby. Um, so if you, if we can bring her back, um, that'd be great. Um, can you hear me now? Is that you, the young woman? I don't, can't see you, but I can hear somebody. Yes. Okay, great. If, yeah. I'm please. not sure why the video is not working, but perhaps, perhaps you can see us. Not yet, but that's all right. What's your name? And, and please speak into the circle. We can my name you. is Sarah, and I'm here with my daughter, Maisie, who's named after Joanna Maisie, Macy. Um, and wow. we are just we are just filled with so much gratitude and so many prayers and blessings to both of you. Um, I was just typing into the chat that I feel like, Joanna, you were the first person to acknowledge the deep, profound grief that I feel as a human um, on this planet right now. And I just wanted to say thank you for acknowledging that. It was a, it was a huge turning point in my life to be able to allow the feelings and not feel crazy that um, I, I don't accept this destruction that we're causing on the planet. I need to get my baby in my arms really quick. And so we, we, we continue with joy and with sadness sometimes. And we are, we're, we're so grateful for this community, this village, this, this warriors for love. And thank you for facing this darkness and facing this tragedy and thank you for the love that is available once we feel this grief and thank you for guiding us and our children oh how wonderful to see their faces and yours dear heart yes thank you so much what a blessing we're here you're fully here with a wide open heart your children are so lucky blessed Oh, Sarah, thank you so much. The transmission from you and your two beautiful children. Exquisitely poignant. Uh, I, if I was going to invite people if they'd like, that many have already done so, just take another minute to offer what's in their heart in the chat. Joanna, is that all right? Yes, yes, we okay. have to that. Yeah. 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 So just, you know, take a moment to close your eyes if you wish. Yeah. And let those feelings bubble up. I'm sure they have already. And if you would share and be seen. Um, and I'll, I'll just say a poem while we're waiting. Um, Quiet friend who has come so far. Feel how your breathing makes more space around you. Let this darkness be a bell tower and you the bell. And as you ring, oh wait, as the, as the wait, oh, as you ring, uh, each ring reveals your strength. Yeah. 
your breath. Yeah. So swing back and forth into the changes. Discover the intensity of pain and the sturdiness of the connections. Well, dear Joanna, we have um, a little less than 40 minutes and on our agenda, we had four things. We don't have to do them all, but just a reminder, you were going to give a kind of a bridge talk and perhaps the Shambhala warrior prophecy next and moving into a short guided um, purpose meditation. And then if there was time, a second council so that people could speak in their hearts what they feel called to, and then a closing. This turning the curve is so important. So I could just say in a sentence that what uh, we discover in every faith, uh, in the Buddha Dharma, it's so beautifully put that we are called to be a uh, sort to our true nature, uh, which is belonging to the whole, earth herself being able to speak through us and feel through us. We become channels. Actually, that's also in my root tradition of Christianity as well. But there's the term of uh, in the Buddha Dharma of Bodhisattva. And the Bodhisattva uh, in us is made of two or is taken over being so open to life that the uh, connections are realized through them and their feelings that they are discover that they belong to each other, that we are belonging through the pain even, through the, because what you have, I guess, they would say that each one of you who spoke and felt and here in this council uh, were displaying the courage of sharing uh, your grief, pain, and anger too. And when you do that, then what you discover is your compassion the depth of your caring. In each tight throat, each tear, each moan, each churning <laughs> of your gut is a sense of uh, compassion. And the compassion, of course, has a wonderful secret. You're, you're suffering with your world. You're not made of cement. You're not a piece of plastic. You're made of earth. Every cell in your body, every feeling in your heart given to you by our big Pachamama. And we're, that's the gift of this time, I guess. If it's a gift to weep and gnash our teeth and is that to find that we belong to this earth and to each other. And I am of the conviction, that's why I'm so glad to have been allowed to live till now, that the coming time is going to be a revelation for us of how we can be for and with each other and what can happen through us. Each step of that, I'm so glad I, this book came out. This very day, active hope. Active means that we hope because we're here and are able to act. We can be acted through. Through is the preposition for this moment as we discover in all the practices and perspectives given in this book and 
already in you by virtue of our interbeing that we are of earth for earth and that we who are actually living now so glad that the new jersey woman mentioned all the beautiful regenerative we are regenerating there is a mystery in that we are part of a great mystery there are those of us who will bloom in ways we never expected who will be able to be for others in a way we never could have imagined it's been such a privilege so brief to be with you these minutes this hour so uh I wish I had some sense of the time left, but or guidance. Uh, but I think that uh, what is very important for us is that uh, we can learn to allow the pain and the suffering to mold us into a knowledge and, and of our being as truly uh, interbeing, belonging. Now, and with that then, there is something we can become and something we can do and something that's going to bring us into a new experience of our own meaning of our life. And we're here today with a man I so trust who has found ways to help us find that. So I want to ask uh, if we can uh, move right in. Is, oh, I keep looking as if I can see you at the end of the table here. <laughs> I'm right here. Yeah. I, I, I love what you said. And of course, I want to invite you to lead us through it. You said there's something that moves through us. The mystery is moving through us to be and do, to be in a certain place, in a certain way, and to love, be a demonstration of love in a certain way. So I, I'm getting my chance to do a purpose discovery meditation in two weeks at our subsequent gathering. Um, I'm happy to do one now, but I think I just want to warmly invite you, if you want to, um, to offer just a short, you know, how to respond to the mystery so that our, our broken-hearted love can act in the world. Yeah. Yes. All right. You know, um, I've had a long life, but I know all the time that if I had ever known that we would face something like this, I would give anything to be there. I wouldn't want to check out. If my people were going to have to face what I've heard from you today and what I know from the reports, uh, that you, for example, who would make a wonderful bill to be a mother, made me a mother, wants to have a baby. Uh, maybe I know that there are those unborn, who are prepared to come in to a hurting world. So uh, we just make our choices in prayer and in trust. I know also that um, I, if I had ever really known, I, 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 as I now discover, that we would have to face this together as earthlings, I would have said, I don't care how old I get or how dim-witted. I want to be there. I wouldn't want to miss it. I wouldn't want to have people face this and, and miss out on being there with them. And uh, so that this is, uh, and maybe you just kind of feel that too. Maybe you also know this, this is to have a time so real, this world under capitalism has gotten so fake with all the stuff we've made, all the weapons we've made, 
all the contaminations we've done, that we can are now uh, we have a chance to uh, see, be there with the results of this consumer society, and to be there, you're discovering a readiness to be there and a readiness to. I didn't see from any words you said that you were consumed with bitterness and revenge against the people who have made the choices. And there are some, and we can name some. I didn't hear that at all. And what is more fertile of our capacity and originality as love? I mean, I felt that from each one of you. It's taking you so far beyond any self-concern or a ambition to play a powerful, enviable role in society. What I heard from you was a deep, deep impulse to be with. You wanted to be with our world. You want, you want to be with. You are tough. <laughs> That's comes from a heart that breaks open to its own power. What a privilege it's been for me to witness that. And it makes me feel kind of proud of you. <laughs> that <laughs> I want to say that whether it's the military or the Madison Avenue, whether we want to turn people into consumers and turn people into automatons, I want to say, this is what we want. We want to be like this. To discover uh, the power uh, of love. And what I'm timing, feeling in this time, too, is uh, the presence of the future ones, the future generations, those who uh, are waiting to be born. Even if we, I have felt such, speaking personally, and with those of you who have uh, done the deep time work with me in the intensives and workshops, hanging out with those future ones who are going to have to live in very different conditions, who are going to have to live with not, without the, with some of the contamination we're leaving behind, we're going to have to live with, uh, well, you heard the, it, we'll be, uh, guided by our love and our listening and our in and the yearning in our hearts for uh, those who are coming And I know that in my work, I have, we have whole sections of our, you know, that are the deep time helping us to 
feel their, their presence uh, and to be faithful to this planet for their sake. You're going to be, I want you to uh, take this moment here with the rest of us feeling held, how we're held by each other's love as well, to let that uh, openness to the life that uh, that's now and about and about to unfold from this this yearning I heard it in some of your voices of what uh, you can what your life has brought you in. gifts to share of what you want to have given to this time. To your brothers and sisters as they let this time reveal greater meaning in their lives to let this very time of uh, danger and anguish and revel revelation of love as well, let it show you or show through you the particular gifts or purpose we have. It's, it's the life. There's something that you can say something that your work can offer. Some ways that what your action, the way life sings through you, can help bring others together, can help in the regeneration of the human project, human presence here. May that light shine into your uh, heart mind now to entertain, to discern what you can offer as a bodhisattva. Or for those of you, we I didn't share the prophecy, but we called it the Shambhala warrior, same, same. So those of you who are, are ready, each of you, you can try it out in language. Maybe it's something you already know. Maybe it's already this, there's some song singing in you that you already have. No, I'm going to, this is the time. This is the time to go. I'm going to bring that medicine. This is the time that I'm going to bake that cake. This is the time I am called to do something in my heart that only I can do. There's a feeling there, the way I want to do it. Yeah. That's Wonderful. Really good. Yeah. Okay, shall we? Yeah, let's, let's have some people share. Um, what song is moving through your heart? What are you called to do? Let's, uh, I believe, let me look at my thing. I think it is Aaron in Newcastle who's, yes, please. Okay. And, and, uh, and so I'm so grateful um, to, to be here with you. Um, and I, I'm so grateful for that grief circle. It's just so powerful to just allow it. Um, and I, that's what I feel called to do. I feel called to. There, I know so many people in my life who have this are living with this dread in the pit of their bellies of what, what the future holds and they can't face it because they think they will die or break in some irreparable way. And having gone through this and, and done my own work with my grief around the climate, I know that we won't break. And I think people need to feel that. So that I feel called to help others. Um, 
to get to where I'm at because where I'm at is all, all I want to do is love. All I want to do is not cause any more harm to anyone in my life and just love my little baby daughter as best I can and, and be strong and be, be there for her for whatever time is left. I hear you. I bless you. Blessings on you, girl. Thank you, Aaron. Jane Jonathan. Allen. Jonathan, in 2002, I was with Joanna in um, Santa Cruz and she asked us to go out and find our intention. And today I'm sitting here and that intention was to use my heart, my hands and my voice for the betterment of the animals. And I, I feel it's continued to do that, live that, be that. In this time, that is what I do. That is what I will continue to do. So I want to thank you for, as my heart just feels the shock, I'm surrounded with love and knowing that that power is within me and I will use it to that betterment. Thank you. I bow to you, Jane Allen. Thank you. Thank you, Jane Allen. As from the UK. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll try and keep it short. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm almost wordless, but I'm so touched to be here. And I feel that, I feel that sometimes my heart feels too much. And sometimes I felt like that's the curse. But in a way I can see that actually, if I can harness it, it is such a gift to others. And I just felt yesterday when I was with some trees that it felt like with my own kind of internal weather inside myself, it feels like the greatest gift I can give and receive is presence, loving presence. And like that is what the more than human world is longing for from, that's what it felt to me and to, to give and receive that and to other humans and just, yeah, journey with that. It feels like that's the healing, it's relationship for me. It's all about relationship and learning and remembering. Thank you. Thank you. Blessings on you, your girl. Thank you, Ez. Hector from Colombia. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Oh, it's so good to see your face. How are you, my dear? Oh. I guess <laughs> it's so lovely to be here. Work. You're doing such beautiful work in Reconectando. Yes, yes. Uh, I just want to let you know that we, in the last four years, as we accompany the work of the Truth Commission here in Colombia with, with the work that reconnects we have been able to initiate many Chambala warriors <laughs> and uh, they are all over the country and loving this place that paradoxically, thanks to the war, is the second most biodiverse place in the world. But unfortunately, because of the so-called peace so far, uh, the deforestation has tripled and and. Uh, we have all the transnationals looking at all these incredible jungles and forests, but there are many people fighting with their lives to protect, and, and we need all of you because we feel that Colombia is, is a, a possibility of regeneration of life on Earth. Uh, we have 20% of the biodiversity of the world. So I just want to thank you, Joanna, for inspiring us all the time to do this work and and to do it with love and with joy and with hope and and with emotion, but connecting to the emotion in the emotion, feeling the emotion to ignite ourselves and, and to do this, this work that you have inspired us all to do. So thank you, all of you, and thank you, Joanna. Blessings on you, Hector. <laughs> Blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Hector. Um, you have a scarf and a red sweater and it just says iPhone and you're muted. <laughs> How about now? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, my name is Valerie. Um, my last name is a funny last name, Wild Man. Uh, I met Joanna at the Ojai Foundation and have been so moved ever since and bring often the Council of Beings to children and young people. And like another person listening to this who has been a mentor, Joe Provisor, hold talking and listening from the Heart Circles Council with children, young people, and teachers. And um, they're in that, in the sadness, there's also so much hope and so many beautiful things that are happening between people and beings and nature and the earth moment to moment. And I know that my purpose is to shine a light on that and to help everyone, especially the children and the young people, to realize their magnificence and power to make a difference. And I thank Joanna so much for helping to instill that in me as well. And all of you, thank you for existing in this circle. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joanna. I mean, another Joanna. <laughs> can you put your mouth a little closer to the mic so she can hear you? Can you hear me now? A little better, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm in Mi'kma'ki in, in um, known as Nova Scotia in Canada. Um, and I am so grateful to be here with you in this really massive circle. Um, and I feel called to hold space for each other's hearts and to witness and to just create beauty, as much beauty as I can, and to try to stay uh, awake and alive and to be as alive as I can and connected as I can with each other. So, thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you to both of the Joannas. Maybe time for, for two more because we want to tee up for you a meeting that uh, Joanna uh, and I are hosting in two weeks and tell you a little bit about a few things. But first, let's go to Rob. Uh, Joanna, you turned my fear into power because I didn't know what life was about until I realized that I was losing it, that we are losing it. And that turning, that great turning made me come alive. And the, the gift of life is clear now for me. And I'm so grateful and I'm working on it to share this with as many people as possible. I'm trying to, there are courses here in Holland with the work that we connect and I'm trying to form a bridge to share it with as many people after they follow the course and to continue to to. I would love to do that all the time. That is my dream. And you created that dream for me and I feel alive now. Thank you so much. Oh, you dear man. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for you. Yeah. Go. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. You Dutch mm. have that. Mm. Get it done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. And the Final share in this portion will be Naoko from Sydney. 
Thank you so much. And um, I can't speak too much English, but um, I had um, um, reconnecting work with the Yuka Saito. I went to Japan in the, I had a seven days intensive camp with her. It was a big decision for me and seven days during a Corona time, it was not easy to, I went to go to back to Japan with my family, um, my family in Australia. They are actually to let me go. I'm very appreciated. And then it's, shaking my heart and this work because you joanna you made me that decision and it's i would really love to change the world even it's a difficult it's a language and everything but through i just want to let through us speak to us and me and um, I would really grateful and gratitude for you, Joanna. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, people in here. I This is my essence to be living on this earth. <sighs> thank you very, very much. What a blessing it is to see your face, hear your voice. Oh, you are a blessing to this world. Thank you so much. <sighs> Thank you. Well, would you like to ring the bell, Joanna, to end this portion of the council? For those who love you all. <laughs> yeah, also want to bow down and touch your feet. I was just going to say for those who'd like to um, stay after this gathering is officially over, uh, I and Johanna, if she wants to stay, um, would love to have a little after party. And anyone who wants to continue to share, um, I'm certainly available. Um, but I would like to um, bring it in for a landing um, with three things. One, in two minutes, just sharing with you a few practical um, things on the menu. Shine a little flashlight on a few of the things uh, on the menu. Um, two, I want to offer you uh, the briefest instruction on a soul walk, something a little mystical to end with. And then we'll end with um, Joanna and I teeing up the next event, which is on Monday, June 27th, uh, featuring, well, we'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, all right, so the two minute practical thing, four baskets, and I'll put this in one of the follow-up emails too. One is to educate yourself. Um, it has been really inspiring, although also heartbreaking to read the reports, the IPIC reports, to watch the videos. Um, I, I recommend you do that. Uh, job one for humanity has been a really important resource for me. If you dare to, you the can all, the website job one for humanity. Yeah. And then um, that the furthest end is the, um, the folks that I mentioned, Jem Bendel and Catherine Ingram and Michael Dowd. And so just giving yourself, exposing yourself to a diversity of climate scientists and reports just to feel like what, what, what's in our possible future. So that's education. Um, the second is, you know, broadly speaking, systemic action. Um, one thing we can do, um, I've joined something called Swing Left because in my country, one of the parties is, what shall we say, more responsible to climate change than the other one has been. Um, so pressuring, electing and pressuring world leaders and corporations. So votes and money I could go on about those two things, but these are two 
levers, uh, they're hard to move. There's no doubt. But when you're with a group of people, um, so swing left is one. Another is um, extinction rebellion. Many of you have heard of it. Um, go to a meeting, see if it's for you, see if they're your people and what they're doing is, is working. Um, another is the work that reconnects. Um, one of the emails will have a link and they're offering online and in-person programs um, that of course, Joanna founded the organization and the work and I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Um, I won't say much about it, but our own personal lifestyle um, is a factor. So consider, you know, living a life that is more and more step by step. You don't have to be perfect, more in integrity with your deepest values. Um, and then the fourth, this is really important. Take good care of yourself. Sometimes that gets lost. If you want to be an activist for the long run, you have to know what you're capable of. And so that self-love, if you want to love the earth, and you do, you know, make sure that you're, you're keeping tabs on your own mental, emotional health. Um, okay, the mystical part. So this question, where is my place? What do I do? That quote from Frederick Buechner that um, Naharaka said at the beginning, he said something like, find the place where your deep gladness, your joy, and the world's ache and hunger meets. That's a great koan. That's a great inquiry, which begs the question, okay, well, wait a minute. How do I find that place? Well, if you're already there, great. If you already have a method to get there, also great. If you don't, here's a, a, a two-minute description of a meditation. Go on a soul walk. And I call it a soul walk because it's not something I want you to walk and think about so much as a change in occupancy. And by that, I mean the everyday personality and ego, in my case named Jonathan, does not know <laughs> what he's supposed to do. I can, I can add one plus one and do a few other things, but I, I don't know where the great mystery wants to deploy me. So what do I do? I go on a walk in wild nature. And first I listen with my skin, the biggest organ of the human body. And then I listen through my heart. And then third, I listen through my belly. What is my belly feeling? What is my belly, my gut pointing me towards? And the fourth is listening through and as wild nature itself. It is coextensive with us or more Accurately, we are coextensive with it. It can mirror and direct us to where it wants us to be. And then last but not least, wild imagination itself. One of the goodies we'll send you is a, a, a soul walk meditation. Um, so maybe I'll just segue to the goodies and then we'll tee up the next meeting and uh, we'll, we'll be done unless you want to stay for the after party. I will send you a series of emails, four or five, um, over the next couple of weeks. And um, I think you should open them. And here's why. The first thing we're going to send you is a, a, an article uh, paper uh, by Larry and David, who will be joining us on Monday, June 27th, um, the Maxims. And I'm going to send you the six Maxims and the link. And it's Joanna who brought this article to my attention. It's very, very good. She loves it. And so do I. I don't. Um, so that's, that's the first goodie that's going to come to you. The second and the next email um, will be uh, free for you, the introduction and the first couple of chapters of the revised edition of Acted Hope. I feel like a, a salesman here, but that's okay because the book is really good. Um, so please uh, consider uh, starting. And, and if, you could, if you could keep yourself muted, maybe it's Joanna I'm hearing. <laughs> I can't see you anymore. Um, so we'll be sending that um, in the second email. The third email will have probably my favorite. Um, we didn't get to it today. In another meeting at Purpose Guides Institute that Joanna came to, she shared the Shambhala prophecy, the Shambhala warrior um, 
uh, myth and story. It was utterly transmissive and spine tingling. And I want you to have that as uh, the third goodie. These are all, all free. Um, and then the fourth uh, email will have yet another goodie. Um, so those are the follow-up emails that we'll be sending. Um, and now I want to um, tee up the, the, the meeting that's happening uh, two weeks from yesterday. Um, in reading this paper on the Mac maxims, I reached out to the authors and said, you know, we're going to probably have a, a follow-up gathering. What do you think about coming and, and fielding questions and discussing this paper that Joanna loves so much? And they were both an enthusiastic yes. Um, so I'm going to send you information about that. It'll be a two-hour meeting on Monday, June 24th, sorry, June 27th, at the same time as this one, which in California, San Francisco time is noon to two. Um, the first hour will be on the Maxims with the authors and Joanna. And the second hour will be with me and Joanna and maybe the authors will, will stick around um, on where purpose discovery, soul level purpose discovery and climate change activism meet. So you can come for one hour or the other hour or the whole program or listen to the recording as you see fit. Um, so before I turn it over to Joanna to say whatever she wants to, to close our circle for today before the after party, um, two requests. One, um, please forward the announcement to your friends. Um, if everyone here, what is it, 6,800 people um, informed one new friend about the gathering with Joanna and Larry and David and myself in two weeks, we could grow this movement just a little bit or a lot. Um, so that's, you know, uh, help with marketing is really helpful because um, it's just, it, it looks like just at a Zoom meeting, but it's actually a lot of work and effort. Um, which brings me to the second request. If you have the means to, would you please consider donating $20 less or more um, to this event? Um, they are expensive to produce. The people who work at Purpose Guides Institute, um, you know, our program director and associate director and so forth, you know, do need to be paid. So if it's possible, if you, if you can't afford it, don't worry about it. It's our gift. Um, if you're a person of means, please consider that actually this climate change as spiritual practice is a series that's been going on for years. And I'd very much like to grow it, but, you know, as a side job, it, it, it yeah, it needs some uh, serious donations. So if that's, if you're in a position to do that, that would be terrific. All right. So Joanna, anything you want to say about our subsequent meeting with Larry and David or anything at all to close yeah, us out? Um, why I get, I'm so excited about the maxims is that um, generally uh, climate change is, is viewed as just something terrible and you want to stop it and, uh, and fight or fight it. And I have been uh, wanting to find a way more creative, more fun to actually see, since it's going to happen anyway, what we can do with and in and in relation to uh, climate change, since uh, we can't wish it away. And uh, even with um, group improvisations or something. And so when the Maxims, uh, uh, David Shank, one of the two marvelous creators, uh, sent me what's going to be shared with you with the six Maxims. I was so excited. I almost instantly called some friends and said, let's make a group. Let's use it because these are like spiritual uh, are it's like a recipe also. It's how to be with this climate change, how to uh, fix your life to how to uh, take it into your life in some way to release uh, a quality of interest and and uh, wonderment and advice, like 
I, we quoted, uh, you know, work hard to grasp the immensity of this. What? And so that was our first, I've been doing groups by on Zoom with, uh, for just a few weeks, uh, that and the others and the, and the next one, the second one, what's it called it? Uh, Max, practice radical hope. Well, same thing, same thing <laughs> as active hope. It's based on what we feel is worthwhile. It's what we want to do and active hope makes us want to do it. And as oh, my co-authors listening and I wish that you were here instead of being all this articulated through a 93 year old head. <laughs> so any rate, uh, so that's blessings on you all. Uh, and I also want in the presence of you all to uh, uh, thank uh, this generous, generous being of Jonathan Gustin of, at this point of his life and uh, at a time when he senses life's fragility because he had some severe illness uh, in the last year and a half and uh, he, what he's doing to let the crisis we're in uh, reorient his life and uh, it's been incredible. You're a model of um, generosity and, and brilliance and those are wonderful things when they're married. Thank you. I, I, I will say this as a way of um, responding to what you said. I'm immensely privileged. The word privilege has a lot of connotations and, and so forth. I'll say one thing. I am aware from just Googling it that 71% of people on the earth live on $10 a day or less. If I were living on $10 a day or less, I would. it would be very unlikely that I would have the bandwidth to be doing things like this. $10 to feed my wife and my kid and the cat, it's no way. So I feel very lucky. Um, just this, just economics, I won't even talking about anything else. So that's a privilege and I get to use it. I get to spend a portion of my time just doing things like this with you and with all of you good people. So many of you, maybe most of you, I don't know, earn more than $10 a day. That's wonderful. And that's not to say that you don't struggle financially, but better than you know many so that feels like a a burdensome privilege as stephen jenkinson put it it's a privilege and it's a burden it's a burden i actually like <laughs> and i love sharing it with you joanna thank you all right naharika Catherine, am i forgetting anything before we uh say goodbye stop the recording and then uh start the after party for anyone who wishes to to uh thank you joanna thank you for responding to this call of the time, letting mystery deploy you again and again, and then coming back in 13 days to be with us again. Your generosity is um, off the mystery. chart. Ah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I, right. Can we have a, like a couple of minute break before we are after party? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, perhaps right. what we can do is we can open up the chat. So if anybody feels moved to share what came up for you, yeah. you can post on the chat during the break. Yeah. And then we will gather for the after party. Yeah. Yeah. And Joanna, though, I would love you to be present. Please, please, please. Also, you know, you've been at this for hours. So if you oh. if you want to call it a day, we would understand. <laughs> Can I, but I, I, um, have a something to, I can, can I, if I'm, um, leave my channel open. Okay. Absolutely. All right. All right. I do want to hear, but I, I would like to yeah. talk to my companion here. Absolutely. We'll yeah. see you if, and when we see you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your attention. And, um, 
we will uh, send you uh, an email link for the next gathering if you wish to come or watch the recording uh, on Monday, June 27th, noon. Lots of love. Mwah. Bye Thank bye. You, and if you want to stay for the everybody. after party, you're welcome to. Thank you, John. Thank you both. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Deep love. Thank you. Much love. Love. love to everyone. Thank, Thank you so much, everyone. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for Thank the you. sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you for being angels among us. You're all beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, the world. Thank you. I'm so grateful you exist. <laughs> Thank you. 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 We are not alone. We are not alone. Are yes, not alone. that is true. Thank you so much. How did I get myself on here? Oh, you're <laughs> Hello, all you beautiful.